Okay, let's talk a bit more about these record set objects here. So far we've seen that they hold the data that comes back when we query um, when we query a table or we run a store procedure. This record set object, it holds data. And in the case of this uh, sub procedure, SQL database underscore store procedure, this record set right here, RS, it holds the data that is returned from the store procedure. And basically, we've seen that, you know, this stored procedure that we run here, get people data, it returns some rows where you pass in an ID and it selects from this table people where the ID is greater than whatever the ID you passed in. So for instance, here's all the data in our people table. Here's the IDs. If I pass in 45 as my ID parameter here, it's going to select all the rows that are that have an ID greater than 45. So it's going to select these three rows. So if I run this, I get three rows. Okay, that's cool. And we've seen that the record set holds that data in memory on your computer and then you can do stuff with the record set. You can loop over the record set and put the names of the fields on the worksheet and then you can copy the record set onto the worksheet here and you can check and see if the record set is empty there. So we can run this store procedure and we get data here. You know, we, we see the three rows. Now let's do something else. Um, what if you want to access the fields, what if you want to access like 47? Uh, you want to get to this row, but in memory, you don't want to put it on the worksheet. How would you do that? Let's do this. To do that, you would do do until rs.eof, and then you would do loop, and then you would do rs. ID dot value you do something like this if RS ID dot value is equal to 47 then and if message box so what this loop does this do until loop just add some tabbing here. This do until loop, it loops over the record set until there's no more records. So in our case, we have three records, you know, or three rows, one row, two row, three rows. And it's going to loop three times and then we can access the fields of our record set. So we can access this ID field by doing this, RS exclamation point, and then the name of your field. And then you can access the value of that and check and see if the value of the RS ID field is 47, then put a message box. But we need a way to loop over this record set. Like, we need to increment something to loop over. So to do that, you have to do rs.move move next. And so we can do that. And this moves to the next row in the record set. And so if I run this, I get stopped at ID 47 and notice there's no data here on the worksheet. You know, after this loop and I loop over all the record set, let's see what's below here. I say copy the record set to the worksheet, but it didn't copy anything to the worksheet. And that's because we moved all the way to the end of the record set. So it's, it's basically like if I run the code, 
when I run this um, it's gonna loop until the record set it uh, is at the end of file right it's this loop until rs.eof so that means after this loop there's going to be no, it, the record set is going to be .eof. It's going to be at the end of the record set. There's going to be no records to copy from because RS is going to have no, it's not going to have uh, any records to copy because you're at the end of it. It's going to be empty. The record set's going to be empty. Uh, in order to copy back to the worksheet, you want to do this. You want to do rs.move first you want to move back to the first record uh, move back to the first row in the record set and now if I run this I get my message box and I get my data here but the key thing to note was if you comment out this line, you know, and let's let's comment out this message box. Actually, I'll just leave it there. You don't get any data on the worksheet because after you've looped through the record set and you've done this, rs.move next, this rs down here, it doesn't have any records to put on the worksheet because it's at the end of the file because you did this you looped until the end of file you need to move back to the first row in the record set by doing this and then you're gonna get your data on your worksheet right there so that's one thing to note is that you can loop over all the records in your record set by doing something like this and using this rs.move next but you need to be aware that when you do that, you you are actually like iterating through each record here. You're, you're going from this record to this record to this record. And each time that rs.eof, or each time through the loop, you know, you're moving down, you're moving down these, these rows. And then the last time, you sort of have nothing in the record set. It sort of comes to this row and it stops. And then the record set, it's it's blank. It's like this, right? And you, you try to paste that to the worksheet, and it, it pastes blank. So you need to go back to the first row, and then it knows, okay, so there's data here, and it pastes the rest of the data. Um, and the other thing to note is that you can access the fields in the record set by, by doing this. Another way to access the fields in the data set or another thing you can do with these record sets. Let me just comment this out. Is to do something like this. Um, you could actually change the value of what's in your record set by doing rs.fields and then you could put an index in here so this record set has four fields, one, two, three, four, and the index is going to start at zero. So this is like the zero index, the first index, the second. So I'm going to do fields two is equal to rs dot fields two plus ten. So let's say I want to add ten years to the age. I can do that by doing this. Um, this is going to change the value in RS, and it's also going to change the value in the database. So watch this. Um, when I run this code, these numbers are going to change here, and they're going to increase by 10. But also the values here are going to increase by 10 actually in the database so if I run this right now you know it's 100 145 and after I run this code I 
I get 110, 110, 55. But notice what's interesting. The database actually changed. So if I run the database, I get 110, 110, 55. But I didn't run an update statement. You know, I didn't do a SQL statement to update to update this. It's really interesting because this line, it updated the values in the database without me writing a SQL statement. So you want to be aware of that, that you can do that. You can update the values in the record set. And if you do it like this, it's going to update the values in the database as well. And you, you're not going to need to put a, a SQL statement. And the reason we could do this is because of this, if we go up to this, uh, this right here, this rs.cursor type. So this cursor type, when it's add open static, it allows you to do that. If I change it to AD forward only, and I run this, uh, let's see what I get. Oh, it does work there. Um, let me just change this. Might not be the static one. If I do this, AD lock read only, and I run it, I get an error. So that's what I wanted to show you is that um, this lock type comes in handy because if you don't want to update your record set, if you want to prevent the updating of your record set, change the lock type to lock read only. And then you'll get an error if you try to update your record set. And I only say that because, as we just saw, if you do this, it updates the data in the database as well. And that might cause issues for you. You know, you might think, oh, I'm going to update my record set so that I can put something on the worksheet. But at the same time, you're, you're updating your, your database. If you want to prevent that and you want to, like, keep yourself from doing that, then change this to lock read only. If you don't want to do that, if you, if you want to be able to update your record set and at the same time, you know, update your database, then change it to AD lock optimistic. So if I run this now, I get 130, 130, 75. If I run it again, the ages will update by 10. They'll increase by 10, 140, 140, 85. Um, <clears throat> so that's what I wanted to show you in this uh, video here. And again, if you're wondering where this code is at, it's in the SQL database module. And I just uh, I just put it down here in this SQL database underscore store procedure. So now we've looked at the record set and you can see you can do a lot of things with it. You can loop loop over the record set by using this rs.movenext. I should also say that if you want to go to the first record in the record set, you could go move first if you want to go to the last record, you could go move last. Or if you want to go to the next record, you go move next. And there's also rs.move previous. And there's other stuff here that you can that you can look at. Um, so that's it for this video. Uh, now you know about record sets.